Good day, everybody. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. Hopefully this video finds you all doing well. Today, I'd like to do a quick vignette talking about a concept that is sometimes misconstrued or misunderstood, and that is the concept of a, what's known as an inferior wall myocardial infarction. Uh, this can be a, a, a ST elevation myocardial infarction, or it could be a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, a STEMI slash NSTEMI, or uh, it might even be uh, something like unstable angina, uh, all three of which uh, fall under a, an umbrella category known as a acute coronary syndrome or an ACS. Uh, so what is an inferior wall STEMI? So when we, when we teach people about 12 lead ECG interpretation, uh, typically what we teach them down and dirty is we look at the uh, what's called the ST segment. So we look at the ECG that I did on myself Let's look at lead V3 here. I've got the P wave, I've got the QRS complex, and then I've got the T wave. And so what we're talking about is this segment right here at the end of the QRS complex going to the T wave. And there's just a little, little J-like, you imagine putting a J in there, and that's called the J point. And in, in generally, what you should see is if I look at AVF here, augmented vector front, and you've got the isoelectric line followed by the P wave, the QRS, and the T wave, this J point here should go back to baseline. If the J point is elevated above the baseline, that may be indicative of a problem. Now we can see here in uh, lead V3, we can see that the isoelectric line is here, and you can see there is about one millimeter each little box is a, is a millimeter, one millimeter by one millimeter. So you have one millimeter above the baseline. Uh, so you might look at this and go, huh, Chris, you might have a problem. Uh, but uh, actually what we're looking at here is something rather common and rather benign. This is something referred to as benign early repolarization. Um, it's actually a very common mimic uh, for a myocardial infarction, but it is uh, fairly normal, particularly in people that are um, healthy people that are under the age of uh, 50. Um, and so I'm actually highly confident that's in fact what we're looking at here. But that's kind of an aside. So what we generally, what people are generally taught what to, to look at a 12 lead, if you have grossly abnormal findings, is you go, okay, what, what are the lead groups Right, you have what is called a contiguous lead group. And a contiguous lead group is a set of leads that look at a specific area of the heart. Um, and we tend to teach what's called uh, I see all leads approach. I is inferior, C is septal, all is lateral. So I is inferior, the C is septal, the A, I think I missed, missed that, is anterior, and then the L is lateral. Those are the major areas that we can directly observe on a standard 12 lead ECG. There are some modified approaches that we can take to look, to focus more on the uh, right side and to focus on the back of the heart, what we call posterior. But these are the standard. Uh, so inferior uh, include the leads two, three in augmented vector front. And this is the standard, at least here in the United States, this is the standard configuration for 12 lead ECG. You have your limb leads, one, two, three, and then you have your augmented. Um, basically, you are taking, of you're doing vector summations of the limb leads to come up with these augmented leads, AVR, that's augmented vector right, AVL, augmented vector left, AVF, augmented vector front. So limb leads, augmented leads, and then you have your six, what are called your precordial leads, which are unipolar leads that wrap around, essentially wrap around the heart from right to left. Um, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. All right, and these make up the standard 12 leads. Um, so we say that leads two, three, and AVF look at the so-called inferior wall, whereas V leads V1 and V2 look at the so-called septal wall. Leads V3 and V4 look at the so-called anterior wall. And then V5, V6, 1, and augmented vector left looks at the lateral wall. AVR looks kind of at the aorta, and there are some changes in AVR that can 
suggest increased morbidity and mortality, but I really won't focus on that for today's discussion. I want to keep it uh, somewhat compact and concise. Okay, so that's what we, we teach. So if you look at something, you see lots of elevation, 2, 3 AVF, you go, oh, this person has an inferior wall STEMI, ST elevation myocardial infarction. Well, what does that really mean? Well, and that's, I think, where we can run into issues. So if I take my 12 lead and I take a heart here, so this is a little model of a heart. So we're looking at the front of the heart and this is the posterior aspect of the back of the heart. So this is the right side. So we're looking at the uh, right ventricle over here and you've got the uh, superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava bringing blood into the right side of the heart. And then you've got the left side of the heart, so we're primarily looking at the left ventricle. Um, you've got right atrium, left atrium here. Uh, this is the pulmonary vein, brings blood out of the heart into the lungs, and then blood from oxygenated blood from the lungs comes back to the heart through these little vessels here called the pulmonary arteries into the left atrium. And then you've got pulmonary arteries here on the right side as well. And then blood gets pumped out of the left ventricle through the aortic arch. All right, and you've got your three major vessels that come off the top of the aortic arch. And then you've got your thoracic aorta that goes down. All right, so off of the aortic root here, you have two major vessels. You've got this vessel going down here on the right side of the heart that's called the RCA, the right coronary artery. And then you've got a vessel that comes off the left side right here, that's called the LCA, the left coronary artery. And the right coronary artery in most patients, something like 80, 85% of patients will wrap around to the back side of the heart and it will feed the posterior aspect of the heart, the back of the heart. Um, and that's called right dominant circulation when the right coronary artery does that. This is, this is now referred to as a PDA or the posterior descending artery. That's what we typically see. And then the left coronary artery branches in, into two major branches. There's this branch that comes right across the front of the heart. This is called the LAD, the left anterior descending artery. And then there is the branch along the side, the left side of the heart, and that is called the circumflex artery. And the circumflex artery will go back and uh, typically feed portions of the um, posterior wall as well. And in something like 15% of the population um, all or most of the posterior wall is, is supplied by the uh, circumflex, and we would call those people uh, left dominant um, circulation. Okay, so when we're looking at leads two, three, and AVF, okay, we are in fact looking primarily at the right coronary artery here, structures perfused by the right coronary artery. So when I say that somebody has ST elevation two, three, AVF, and we say that this is an inferior wall myocardial infarction, what we're really referring to, the inferior is actually the inferior aspect of the left ventricle, all right? This, this area right in here is the left ventricle. Um, and so we're talking about a very specific part, the inferior portion of the left ventricle. Um, so part of the left ventricle is supplied by the right coronary artery, but there's more going on underneath the surface than just that. There is all, there are rather, all of these other structures here on the right side that are, that are perfused by the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery perfuses the right atrium and the right ventricle. And then there's a little branch of the right coronary artery that goes up. And you can't actually see it on this heart. But if I pull this away, all right, this is the right atrium here. Um, oops, stay there, stay there. So we're looking at the right atrium here. You have a little group of cells of, I don't know, maybe 100 or so cells up here in the right atrium called the SA or the sinoatrial node. And that branch is called the nodal artery that goes up and supplies perfusion to the SA node. And then you have a, um, some tissue down in here called the, the, the uh, junction, 
in the AB junction that can act as a pacemaker as well, a backup pacemaker, and the junction itself kind of stalls conduction and allows the ventricles to fill up with blood and, and so on and so forth. Um, so when we say that someone's having an inferior wall STEMI, or an NSTEMI, whatever the case may be, there are many other structures rather than just the left ventricle involved, primarily the right ventricle and the SA node. And that's why sometimes people that have right-sided acute coronary syndromes, 2, 3, AVF on the ECG, you can get bradycardic or slow heart rate. You can get bradycardic rhythms because the SA node takes a hit, the AV junction can take a hit, and you can get heart blocks. Um, in some cases, uh, somewhere around maybe half the time, thereabouts, you can also have infarction of the right ventricle, which means that right ventricle is not going to be able to effectively manage the blood that's coming to it. And remember, the right ventricle pumps blood through the lungs and into the left ventricle. So the right ventricle preloads the left ventricle. So you can lose preload the left ventricle and you can get really low, you can get real low blood pressure and you can get bradycardic um, and you can have right-sided heart failure uh, signs and symptoms, right? And that's why in some cases, these patients may need drugs like atropine to increase the heart rate. They may need transcutaneous pacing if, uh, if their pacemakers fail, the SA and AV, uh, SA node and AV junctions fail or the intranodal pathways that connect um, the atria um, to the AV junction uh, fail uh, because they're not being adequately perfused. Um, so there's a lot that can go on uh, there. And there are also some people that associate inferior wall STEMIs with just right-sided problems. They'll look at that and they'll go, oh, loss of preload, risk for right ventricular infarction, risk for bradycardia, while forgetting that part of the left ventricle is also perfused by the right coronary artery, the inferior portion of the left ventricle. So it is possible for people to have left ventricular failure from a, an inferior wall myocardial infarction, specifically a STEMI, right? It is possible um, if you involve or impact enough of that left ventricle um, that you can have some left Right, you can get pulmonary congestion and in, in the more classic left ventricular failure findings um, associated with that. Right, so I just wanted to point that out and just drill down into the concept of an inferior wall STEMI, and hopefully everybody understands that there are actually multiple structures involved when we are concerned about S, ST substantial ST changes involving leads two three. Um, and AVF. There's a lot more going on there than just it's all right-sided stuff. Um, you can hit the left ventricle uh, in addition to right-sided structures or by itself. Okay, hopefully that made sense and hopefully uh, you all understand the concept of the inferior wall STEMI in some more detail. All right, everyone, have a great day. Take care, doing whatever you may be doing. We'll see you in the next video.